So today we're going to be talking about budget pedals. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Guitar Manifesto. Hope everybody's doing well. So recently I made a video on making a budget pedal board. Um, I did a bit of a giveaway, so if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to the video in the corner. But um, yeah, one of the pedals I was using was a Behringer UC200 chorus pedal. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of Boss pedals. I've been playing guitar 28 years now. I started off using Boss pedals. And I've used a lot of pedals in my time, but I always tend to revert back to the Boss pedals. I just find them durable, well made, well constructed. They last and they do sound very good. This is my go to distortion pedal. Um, in terms of other effects, I use sort of chorus, um, delay, that sort of thing. But for the last budget pedal board I made, I used a Behringer UC200. I had a few people mention in the comments that the UC200 Behringer pedal uses the same chipset as the Boss CH1 chorus pedal. Initially when I actually used this pedal I was actually really impressed with the sound quality of it. I did think it did sound really good so yeah, my ear, you get used to what you, you, know, you like the sound of and to me this did sound really good. I was surprised to hear that these basically are the same chipset used in the Boss CH1 so yeah obviously it's a decent pedal. Boss pedals now are getting really expensive I remember when you could pick these up for around £25 literally across the board but they're getting rather expensive now um, beyond the point of affordability in terms of if you want to buy a full pedal set you're going to be looking into the well into the hundreds but in terms of build quality, I still think the Boss are up there. That's got a metal chassis and you know these just last forever. They are bulletproof. You can literally chuck them about and they'll be fine. These have got a plastic uh, casing to them, but nevertheless they still feel really good. It's got a nice uh, feel to the actual pedal itself. I don't particularly like pedals with this little button on there. Playing live, I've always found they're hit and miss, but with... These kind of pedals with the big pedal, I got size 12 feet, so um, yeah, I need something I can just sort of whack and I know it's going to turn itself on and off. So if you get a chance, I'll put a link in the description below to their JHS pedals video talking about Behringer's and you'd be amazed that, uh, again, this one is basically the Boss CH1. Um, they do copies of the DS2, the Tube Screamer, uh, the Boss Tremolo pedal that sort of thing. So personally in my videos over the last two or three years I've been using the Boss ME70 multi effects pedal. Really good pedal set, it's got everything I sort of need on there but I just feel the sound just quite ain't there. You can't beat a good old-fashioned standalone pedal. The sound really does stand up to itself. So I think what I'll do is I'll start getting a few of these Behringer pedals. I'll do individual reviews. I'm going to make myself a new pedal board that I'm going to use on every video and I think I'll pretty much just basically use FM Behringer. It's going to take me a lot to get away from the Boss DS2 that has always been my go-to distortion pedal so I'm going to try and get the Behringer equivalent to that and we'll do a, a side by side comparison. This pedal in particular retails for about £22. Most places charge a bit of shipping on top of that but for that sort of money that is a bargain. The equivalent Boss pedal you're looking well over £50 now. Um, the delay pedals, you're looking about £90, so they're going up in price. And if you look at the older stuff, um, people look for the, the old Japanese-made Boss pedals, and they, they're hitting big money. I've been really impressed with these Behringer pedals. I will do a full review of this, so if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. But definitely check out the JHS video. I'll put, a, again, a link in the description below. I will review every single one, and then I'll do a whole pedal board and... Yeah, see what you all think. In terms of expensive pedals, boutique pedals, I just think they're overpriced. I know some of them do sound good, but my experience over the years, I've been underwhelmed by a lot of the pedals. I particularly don't like these switches. This is a bell cap pedal. This is from Gear for Music. This is their own brand. And these are pretty decent pedals. It does sound good, but again, I just don't like that little switch. 
I really do like the good old fashioned stomp box, sort of big pedal, easy to do, durable, um, yeah just a nice quality pedal and yeah, see what we think, so if you if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below or just give me your opinions on budget pedals versus expensive pedals. In my opinion, I don't think you should spend more than £50 on a pedal. I just think anything over that, companies are just sort of, you know, making a lot of money for nothing. I, I get that there there is handmade pedals and they're going to have to put them at a higher price range, but for me personally, I still think... £50 is more than enough for a pedal, so anything under that I think is a bonus. So so that'll probably wrap it up for today, so if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram, The Guitar Manifesto. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Peace.